I'm Vicki Howell and welcome to a series that we are calling the TKS Insiders. So this is a special bonus playlist right here for the Knit Show YouTube channel viewers that really sort of fills you in on insider scoop on products and yarns and tools of the trade that we love. We've partnered up with some really great companies and we're excited to share them with you. Today, we are going to be talking about global backyard industries and these adorable little cactus kits. Now you might remember them from our holiday episode, the handmade holiday episode number 110. They were featured in our sort of in our gifties things section. But what we thought was why not hear more about the story? Cactus are so on trend right now. I always say cacti are the new owl. Um, they're kind of like the little crafty mascot. You know I love them. I wore a cactus dress also in the handmade episode. Um, but we also thought we just thought you know what great gift. Holidays are coming up, also really fun to make. If you're like me and have a black thumb, this is the way to go to create a really great plant for your desk or your cuticle or anywhere in your life. So the scoop about these are that the husband and wife that started the company, um, they had these coloring books um, and they were cactus, cactus calm as you can see really adorable and so when they decided to sort of move on to the crafty scape they gave them to the designer Laura to create these pieces so first why don't we talk about what's inside of these kits so there's two kits there's the Charlie and the Ruby later on I'm going to be showing you how to how to use all the skills that you'll need to make both of them and assemble both of them so make sure you stick around for that first though let's see what's in them so We'll look at this one, the Charlie. They come in a resealable bag, which means all your stuff will stay together so you won't lose it, which is great. Um, and you could use this as a gift wrap package also, just throw a bow on it. Then it comes with everything that you need. So it comes with the pattern, the polyfill stuffing, of course the yarn, the little prickly yarn, the terracotta yarn for the pot. It comes with the little crocheted flower. This part you don't have to DIY, it's already done for you. The earth tone yarn that kind of mocks the dirt. A straw and plastic piece, which I will give you the scoop on in a little bit. And of course, if you're gonna crochet something, what do you need to crochet it with? A crochet hook and these are really nice hooks ergonomic great grip hooks last thing of course you need a needle for weaving in ends all right so everything comes together so that means that you can grab this for the crocheter in your life or you can get it for yourself and then make them one of these charlie cactus so the ruby um, kit contains the exact same stuff with minor modifications obviously there's going to be the pink yarn for the flower and we're going to dive into that in a bit what I thought is, is that I will start by showing you all the skills that you need to make the Charlie cactus, which is this cute little guy. Um, and then from there, you'll be most of the way for making the Ruby, but I'm gonna show you how the cactus portion is done. So why don't we get started? All right, I'm set up to get started. So this project is made by making the terracotta pot first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just show you sort of the basic skills that you need to create the shape. Every project that starts in the round like this one starts at the wee baby center. So there's a few ways that you can do this, but this pattern calls for using the magic loop method. There are different ways to use the magic loop, or excuse me, the magic circle method. This is just the way that I've chosen to use it. So you're going to take the yarn and wrap it around two fingers twice. So you'll see that you've got two loops on your fingers. Then, you want to take your hook and go under the first strand, grab the second strand, and you'll see that you've got a little loop. Then you pinch it and do one chain and that secures it. Okay, so from here, you're going to be working into this circle, the magic circle, as it were. And the pattern calls for single crochets 
nine of them. So to do that, you're gonna just work in the center. So single crochet is insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, you'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over again, pull through. Again, insert your hook through the circle, yarn over, pull through, so you have two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so you're gonna continue doing that until you have nine. So there's four, five, and I'm working over both strands. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so once you've done that, you're gonna have this craziness, but this is where the magic comes in. So you take the tail, or excuse me, the working yarn, and you just pull. And slowly what happens, I'm gonna move my hook, get it out of the way, is that circle shuts. Isn't that cool? So no matter how many stitches you have to work inside, you can make sure that you get this really nice, tight center point for your project. Okay, so to join the round, you need to do what's called a slip stitch. So we're just going to slip our hook underneath that chain one from the beginning, yarn over, and pull through both loops. I give it another tug just to make sure it's as secure as I want it, and that is our first round. All right, now what I'm gonna show you is how to do the increases that keep this circle flat. Again, we're working on the bottom piece right here. Okay, so we're going to chain one, and from here, we need to work two stitches in every stitch, so we're doubling the stitches. So that means two single crochets in the loop. Now, when you're working a stitch as normal, you wanna go under both loops of the stitch, which you can see from the top. Okay, so there's two stitches in that one stitch below, so I'm, gonna show, I'm going to show you again. So insert, yarn over, pull through. Insert in the exact same loop that you did before, pull through. And you're going to do that in every stitch all the way around. So if you get lost, you can kind of tug on your piece and see, OK, I see this one is moving, so I know I've worked in that stitch, so I must need to work in the next one. So insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. In that exact same stitch, single crochet. All right, so you're gonna just repeat this all the way around, and so you will end up having, wait, did I just do one? Okay, so if you ever do that, where if you lose track, all you have to do is go back and look and see. I can see there's one stitch right there and another in there, so that, that means I did actually make two stitches in the loop. Okay, so the increasing that you do in a piece like this starts out heavy, right? So we're doubling the stitches. But then as the piece gets bigger, you put just plain stitches in between the increases at an incremental, incrementally as it gets bigger for the piece to lay flat. I'm going to show you just how to do this for this next row. And I'll show you kind of a smaller version just so you have the skills but without having to sit here and watch me make an entire piece. So we're going to chain one. It does not count as a stitch. This next round, we are going to put one plain stitch in between all of our increases. So I'm gonna work the two single crochets in that beginning stitch, the same place we did the slip knot, or excuse me, the slip stitch. Then in the next stitch, which is this one, I'm only going to make one single crochet. Then in the next stitch, two, and so on and so on, all the way around. OK, 
Okay, so we've gone all the way around. We are ready to join that round with a slip stitch. And there's our round. And you're going to continue in that manner only as the pattern calls for putting more single plain stitches in between your increases until you get the piece to be the size that it states in the pattern. So now that we are done increasing, we want the piece to no longer be flat. We want it to curve up. But if you'll notice here, it's got a really nice edge that really sort of solidifies it as a bottom and versus it being a nice rounded bowl, they, they've designed it so that it'll sit flat, which is really nice detail. So to create that, so you're going to chain one and then what we want to do is we want to work a single crochet, but instead of the regular stitch, we're going to work around the posts of the stitch. So we're going to Put our hook under the post of the stitch, yarn over, pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through another loop. Again, work around the post of the stitch from the round below, single crochet. And you're just going to do this all the way around. And I'm going to show you in a second what, the, what, what this is actually doing. Let me just work a couple more. So you have to insert from front to back, and then you come back up with that guy, high hook, yarn over, two loops on, around. And what that does, if I flip it over, you can see that that makes a nice ridge for your pot. And then you're just going to work plain single stitches all the way around. Okay, so you get a piece that looks like this. And now it is time to move on to your base. So the base is made exactly the same way as, or excuse me, this is the earth part, is made exactly the same way as the bottom of your terracotta pot. So you know all that you need to know there. The only thing that you will need to do is change over to the earth tone yarn. Okay, so we've got that, we know what to do there. So then what we need to do is we need to make sure that we've got a little stability in the bottom and that's what this little disc is for. And we're gonna place it in the bottom of our piece and then it stands up really easily. Okay, so we've got our earth part, we've got our pot part, now it's time to make the cactus. So I'm gonna move these out of the way and reach in and get our prickly yarn. Okay, so I already started a piece. This yarn's a little bit harder to see the stitch definition because it's got those great pricklies for the cactus. So what I did is I created the beginning of the cacti or the cactus piece, using the exact same method that we saw to create the circle and the bowl shape for the pot. Um, but what I wanted to show you is that from here, since we are closing our piece, we need to learn how to decrease. For this project, we're using a single crochet two together. So that's what I'm going to show you here. Now, just like we increased, when we increased the increases got incrementally further away from each other. We're going to work in reverse with the decreases. So they're going to start further away with each other. And then as you progress, they'll get closer and closer together. So that means that for this one, you are going to ch chain one, which I've already done. And you're going to single crochet two together. I may have to pick up some other yarn to show you how to do this. We'll see how this goes. So to single crochet it two together, you're going to insert your hook in the next stitch and yarn over and pull it through as you normally would for a single crochet. But this is where we shake things up. Then we need to go in the next stitch and do the exact same thing. So insert the hook, yarn over, pull through. Now we have three loops on our hook. We need to yarn over one more time 
and pull through all three of them. So now that's turned two single crochets into one. So then for this project, we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches, and then we're gonna do the decrease again. I just wanna show you one more time to make sure that you're seeing it. You're gonna insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, go to the next stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through a loop, yarn over one last time, and pull through all three. And just following the pattern, you're gonna continue in that matter in that pattern, rather, until you get a piece that looks like this. Really cute, you, there's a little bit of an opening I'm gonna show you, and I've already pre-stuffed this. You're just gonna take your stuffing, stuff it as you normally would, any project. It's already super, super cute. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces now. I think it's time to assemble. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that our cactus will stand up on its own. And so we need this little straw guy. All you need to do is insert the straw into the cactus and then slide with the right side facing the bottom of the cactus, slide that on top. And then from here, you want to make sure that your stuffing goes into the pot. Make sure you don't overstuff it or else it'll get all misshapen, so you might have to play around with it a little bit. When you get it kind of where you want it to be, and that still might be a little much. You're going to go ahead and nestle your straw in. And place it on top. And kind of play with it until it lines up as it does. Then you want to take your needle, and they call it a yarn darner, which is pretty cute. And you want to sew the pieces together. Okay, so all you need to do is make sure that you have your tail. You want to thread your yarn darner with it. And then you want to just match up the loops. And sew around. Now, there, you have a couple choices for this cactus. You can see that it's kind of wiggly waggly. You can either take some of the neutral or the um, fuzzy green yarn and you can sew it down. Or, don't tell anyone I said this, you could just hot glue it. Either way. Before I got the whole piece sewn together, I'd really want to come up through the piece so that I can bury the tail in through the inside and then nobody sees it. And because this yarn is so fuzzy, you really don't even have to worry about what the stitches look like, just kind of jab and pull. And you would just do that all the way around, really, really easy, okay? So to seam it around, you're just going to come under one of these loops, grab it, Grab the loop of the top piece and pull. And you just continue that all the way around. You can see how it comes together. You also want to sew on your little flower, which is super easy. You know, just whip stitch it. So this is what it would look like. You continue stuffing. And I like to just kind of mush it around. It helps if you break up the stuffing ahead of time so that it doesn't get really lumpy. And when you're finished, you'll have a cute little Charlie guy like this. Really fun and really easy. And so we've made one. 
They're so cute, let's make another one. So let's move on to Ruby. Okay, so we just finished up making the adorable Charlie cactus, and now we're gonna move on to Miss Ruby. So first I wanna show you the supplies that are in this kit. They're, they're similar, but they've got a few things that make them really different. Again, they've got the zippy bag, reusable bag, and they've got the stuffing and the terracotta yarn, of course the instructions, which by the way also have photos, which is helpful. You've got your cactus yarn, you've got your earth tone yarn, but in this one, you also get some cotton um, hot pink yarn, and that's to make the flower on top. And then you also, along with the same as with the Charlie, you've got your hook and your disc and your straw and your darning needle, but you also have a little bit of embroidery floss. And that will be for some seaming up, which I will show you. So, we know what we have, all the supplies that we need to make this, why don't we get started? All right, for the Ruby Cactus Project, we are going to skip the terracotta pot portion because it's very, very similar to the Charlie one. So we've covered all of those skills. What I wanna focus on is the different shaped cactus. So to get started, you are going to follow the pattern and chain 15, or excuse me, 16. You're going to work a couple of rows of single crochet. This is our row four. So this is gonna actually create a ridge. So for this row, what we wanna do is we want to chain one. That gives us the height of the single crochet. And then we wanna work in the front row, or the front loops only. Okay, so again, a little hard to see with this yarn, but that means going under, instead of going under both loops like we normally would, we wanna go under just that front and then single crochet as normal. So again, in the next stitch, under just the front loop, all the way across. And this is another method for creating a little bit of a ridge. It'll give you the texture. And you'll see in a second that there is a method to this madness. Okay, so you're going to continue that all the way across. Now, as the pattern calls for, you're gonna work some single crochet rounds, or rows rather, as normal, so not in the front loop. Then later, what you're going to do is work in the back loop. So we're going to, just for the purposes of this video, pretend that I have a couple of plain single crochet rows in between. But the next one I'm going to show you how to work in the back loops. Okay, so as you'll work along at a certain point, as I just said, you are going to need to work through the back loop only. So just like before, You're gonna single crochet as normal, but instead of going through the front loop like we did before, and remember, in the pattern you'll have some straight rows in between, we are going to work in the back row. This kind of creates a ribbing of sorts, if you think about a ribbed sweater. It's gonna give that effect. So, to work through the back loop, you kinda of have to dive through that top of the stitch, pull up the back loop, Yarn over, single crochet. And that's really all there is to that. So you're going to get a piece that looks like this, and you can see the, the subtle ridges, but they're made less subtle by piecing them together. So what we've done is we've taken, this is where the embroidery floss comes in, and they've already started this piece. They've folded in the first round, row rather, and they've put it to row four and just whip stitched. Then you pinch it again and whip stitch some more. And this is another one of those situations where 
you don't have to be really super careful with your stitches because number one, this yarn is super fuzzy furry, you won't see it, but number two, this is also the inside. Okay, so after you're done with that, you will get, swap out a piece that looks like this. So now you just have one more. So you could continue using floss if you wanted to, or you could just use your tail. I think either would work out well. And then you're gonna fold it in. And sew it to the beginning. Now, this piece also, much like the Charlie piece, will also have a straw to keep it straight. So once you, you've finished with the process, you'll have a piece that looks like this, but you need to use the straw and stuff it through. And it looks like that, see, super easy. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so this would be assembled just like the other one with the terracotta pot where you would stuff everything Stick it in, we're good. All right, the last thing that we're gonna focus on is the little flower at the top. So we have a pre-made one here. I'm not gonna show you how to do it because it's made exactly with the same methods that we've done for the bottom of the terracotta pot and for the top of the earth. Um, there's just a couple pieces sewn together. So if you need a refresher on that, just go back towards the beginning of this video. What I do wanna focus on are the loops that make it have that cute little shape, which is done with stitching. So all you need to do is get your yarn darner and a double strand of the pink cotton yarn. And you just wanna come up from the underside through the center of your piece, wrap it around and come right back up making sure the strands are together, but pulling so that it distorts the fabric. Then you're gonna to move to the other side, maybe just a little off the center. You're gonna repeat the whole process. So I'm going under, coming through that center point, pulling, and then we'll do that one more time. Coming under. You kind of have to needle your way through the stuffing. Pull taut. Our flower shape has come together. So I will just come down to the bottom of my piece and maybe give it a knot just so that the the, all of our new bunching that we did stays tight. And then you can just snip it with yarn. And this piece you don't even have to weave in because you can hide it under and then sew it to the top of your piece. This piece will be sewn together just exactly how the Charlie one is. And then what you get is a little something that looks like this guy, which would also kind of be a cute fascinator, but Instead, we're gonna plant it. So same thing, there is a disc at the bottom to keep it flat. We're gonna nestle our straw in there, take our yarn darner, whip stitch around. That's all there is to it, done. Really cute, really sweet, a great gift either as a kit or finished objects. Doesn't matter where you live, cold weather, hot weather, you can always have a little bit of succulent cuteness in your house. So enjoy, and for more great gift ideas like this, please check out our holiday episode, the gifty section, and for more cute amigurumi projects like this, please check out our amigurumi episode. Thanks. <music>